I caught a plug, I'm finessing. I'm strapped up with the Smith and Wesson. Trapping at the house with the boys on the one At first, it used to be called like, uh, but then okay. we used to. We used to like be real fresh, and everybody be like, "Look at my dad! Look at my dad!" So we did it at the same time. Yeah. So it really was like a way of fashion. I'm counting the narrows with Robert De Niro. He telling them that you're amazing. Yeah, the greatest rapper of all time, nigga Quavo, nigga. What's up? Fought the God, fought the God. I just want to live life, life. Now, how do you how do you stay out of the way of of of, of beef? Cause cause Soldier Boy has some words for you. Fuck that nigga. Okay. Stack and pray and stay out of the way. Everybody know I smoke the green and I be serving fiends. Nigga, I be toting beans. Nigga, don't know run up. If you run up on me, yo ass gonna get done up. Nigga, it is BMT. Fuck that shit. Nigga. Nigga. Oh, hey, hey, young Quavo got cake. And we smoking in the morning. Yes, I call it awakening bait. Hey, I'm ballin' yeah. like on Kobe. Yeah, the bitches, they all on me. Young Quavo, he dread it ballin'. I be like on steady choking. Cause I'm smoking. So to start things off, First things first, the Migos, obviously consisting of three members. Quavo, whose real name is Quavius Marshall, born in 1991, who's actually Takeoff's uncle, whose real name is Kershnick Ball, born in 1994, and Offset, whose real name is Kiari Cephas, who's actually Quavo's cousin, born in 1991. They were all raised together in a suburban area in Atlanta, where the group was actually formed back in 2008, where they were actually called the Polo Club. And Offset wasn't even a part of it at first, it was another dude that they knew from the area. It wasn't until high school that Offset really started rapping. Quavo actually said this in an interview that I ain't gonna sit here like my neighborhood was hard and I had to get out there and grind. We made it hard for ourselves. We chose to stay in the streets. Trout. The name Migos would be formed in 2010 and they would officially release their first mixtape Jug Season in August of 2011. It was only the start with their next mixtape No Label releasing in June of 2012 that really started to gain some steam with the track Bando. Let's go! Trapping out the house with the boys on the window. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm a real fan. Let's go, Migo! Migo! Let's go! I'm telling y'all, they gonna blow up next year, bro. I'm telling you, bro. They gonna blow up, man. Now, you might ask, what did the Migos grow up listening to? No girl listen to Outkast. Listen to uh, Go Tip. 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 Jeezy. Lil Scrappy, all yeah. them. Uh, Snap and Roller, uh, Trend came out, Soldier Boy, yeah. all the D4L and all that. D4L, that. Yeah. all that, yeah. You want know the Trend? Okay. We really like Atlanta music. I ain't really like too much New York music, Cali music. All, all I like is Southern music. Now, you guys know I'm a huge Soldier Boy fan. If you didn't know, well, now you know. I actually found out about the Migos through Soldier Boy with the songs Gold and We Ready that came out in early of July 2013, before Drake eventually hopped on the Versace track. Yeah. Go, 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 hey, go, go, go. I be flexing in that new world, new so much hype. On my neck. Speaking of Versace, which everyone and their mother was rocking at the time, whether real or fake, the Versace track was a big deal, bro, and it put them into the mainstream once Drake hopped on it. Versace, Versace, Medusa head on me like I'm Numenati. And during this whole time that Versace is blowing up, Offset is actually locked up, bro, for violating his probation that he received for a stolen car. The Versace remix first hit. Like, how many more months did you have left on your sentence? It's like five months. Ah, uh, that must have been rough as fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, 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 I was still straight though, cause I was straight. I was just chilling. I knew I, I, it was a blessing to come home, son. You feel me? 
it was actually a random beat that Zaytoven had already had in the stash, amongst a bunch of other ones and he just handed them to the Migos. They laid down the track, played it at a party that Drake was at, and he was like, yeah bruh, I'm hopping on that. At the time, I found the Migos' flow to be pretty unique and different, just their whole swag and aura about them was definitely different from what I was hearing back in 2013, which was probably just a bunch of Chief Keef, bruh. Started on my day with a blunter, -er. bye. The YRN mixtape that released that year had another track on it that started to buzz in late 2013. I got Molly, I got white. <laughs> Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana. I personally remember Hannah Montana being a decent hit and was buzzing for sure. Now 2014 comes around and they didn't waste no time, bruh. Dropping No Label 2 in February of that year, with many diehard Migos fans claiming that this tape is their best project, with bangers such as Where Were You, Woo! Where Were You When I Was Your Finesse and Midget, Hot Boy, Hot Boy, Hot Boy, Hot Boy, Hot Boy, Hot Boy. Freak no more. Go. She don't wanna be a freak no more. She don't wanna take money, get geek no more. Birds and more. Had a dream that I woke up in a roar. Skirt, skirt, skirt. With two other songs actually ending up becoming pretty big hits for them that year. With Fight Night and Handsome and Wealthy. If you know me, know this ain't my first way. Certified everywhere, ain't got a print resume. I don't know why I came Go. in this club with you, girl. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention the song Emmett Smith. That was another song that was pretty big for them that year. OG Migo fans, you remember that shit. Go, go, run it with the set. During this time, they were buzzing like crazy, and I personally remember wanting to go to their show in Irving Plaza, New York that year, but I forgot what happened. I think I had to work or some shit. I probably should have called out now that I think about it. <laughs> but yeah, Migos was going crazy doing shows, more interviews, more features. And speaking of features, bro, these three songs I'm about to mention alone are fire, bro. Lil Durk's track off Signs to the Streets 2. Bet you won't bust a move. Have a nigga floating in the chatter with your river food. Soldier Boys gassing my tank. Having no plug on the gas. I'm having it. Having no plug on the me. I'm having it. And Rich the Kid's trap. Re, re. That shit is fire, bro. <laughs> trap, 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 trap. I'm speaking bilingual. I'm talking to Spanish. That mota, coca. Hit him with a remit. Trap. Yeah, 2014 was it, bro. In June, they actually ended up signing a deal with 300 Entertainment, which is under Atlantic Records. They didn't stop there, though. Releasing another very solid mixtape in November of that year, with songs such as Wishy Washy, You know, that's you know yeah. Wishy Washy, Wishy Washy, they'll fuck your partner, fuck your What y'all doing? Northside and more. Up in the morning, gotta thank God. Go. Walking out the banner with a 4-5. Some bullshit. This is some ratchet shit. I ain't coming back. We ain't coming back to Sadie. Hey, no, not me, though. The me out here fighting this shit. No. Shut up, bitch. What, y'all thought I wasn't gonna talk about the beef they had with Chief Sosa? I have to, bro. So let's backtrack a bit. In late 2013, Chief Keef tweeted this and said, Heard Migos sneak this and no talking. With Migos responding saying, Migos don't sneak this and don't entertain bullshit. We entertain money. I don't think we truly know exactly what set Chief off, but it's said that he found an issue with the Migos track Broken Knees. Every time we see you, you get broke and broke. Where Offset said, No off days, everyday payday. My diamonds looking like KK, white. Maybe Sosa thought that was a jab at his daughter KK. I don't know. And honestly, bro, I could be here all day talking about the beef that they had, but that would probably be a whole nother video in itself. But Chief Keef's homie Capo got involved. Fredo got involved. Dudes from DC got involved. It was a whole spiel, bro. Chief Keef got mad because they came to Chicago while he was on rehab. Sosa going off on Twitter, bro. It was a whole thing. <laughs> For real. They then went on to make a track titled Jealousy, which many people all over the internet assumed it was a sneak diss to Chief Keef. Let's talk about jealousy. I ain't never did a sneak diss. Call my hitman quick to put you on the hit list. 
Uh, that song is fire. Y'all came with the wait. Y'all came with the heat though, like completely out of the like out of the blue. It's like niggas didn't really know if y'all were gonna respond or not, or like people are tweeting on Twitter and doing all that Instagram social media bullshit. Kind of talk to me like what's going on with that? Like I, it kind of nobody really knows how that all started with Chief Keef. Like the song say it's jealous. Fit, it ain't even about Chief Keith. It ain't even about. It ain't even about. It ain't even about, 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 about nothing like that. We, we get money, man. We get. Listen, man. The song, the song, like it's you like when, like if, for you. if somebody stand up to the song, man. If for you, then you you jealous. You a jealous nigga. And we won't, we won't sneak this. We won't do no sneak this. And so, if we got a problem, just pull up on us. And we and we do pull up. So. We just gonna keep we gonna keep getting our money. We ain't even talk about that no more, cause mm -hmm. yeah, how we eat, we eat. We grind today, man. We jelly up on our city. We going back. We on one yeah. TV jam and every radio station. We in your city. Shout no dis out. no disrespect to Chicago. We love Chicago. We love all my niggas in Chirac. Mm -hmm. I got niggas in Chirac, so it just I guess you know what I'm saying. I guess it's jealousy. So. 2015 comes around and now the label's starting to get a little antsy. Like, where the album at, Migo? They were saying that the album was gonna be called YRN The Album, but it eventually became Young Rich Nation, and after a delay or two, it finally released on July 31st, 2015, with the singles One Time and Pipe It Up to back up the album. Oh! Smoke one one time, Smoke one. drink one one time, drink, drink. pipe it up, uh, pipe it up, Down. pipe it up, Down. pipe it up. Down. Selling 18,000 first week, reaching number 17 on the billboards. The album was aight. Oh, try again. Oh, try again. Oh, try Personally, I thought the album was pretty weak. A bunch of skips, to be honest. It just wasn't better than their previous material, really. Migos in the building. Gap tell him, man, we challenging everybody to make sure y'all. Oh, damn, damn. He's doing, he's doing the dab, and then he's, he's hitting them folks. That's a dab. Yeah. Look at my dab. Your arm up and your elbow up, and you put your face into it. That's called bapping, 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 bapping. Mm. Yeah, do that shit you used to call mm. Dabbing is a way of fashion Honestly it didn't even matter that the YRN album wasn't a huge success Because they caught a huge blessing when the dab sensation started catching on in late 2015 Bruh, everyone, and I mean everyone and their grandma's, uncle's, auntie's, cousin was doing this dance, bruh If there was a music video from this time to 2016 You can almost guarantee that someone's gonna be dabbing in the video It's like a time capsule, for real they capitalized off this a whole lot, dropping the music video which got over 40 million views on YouTube and was just all over social media. It was actually a song off their mixtape Back to the Bando that released late that year, which I thought was a lot better than the Young Rich Nation album. And during this time, Offset was locked up again, so Quavo and Takeoff was holding it down. Towards the end of this year, they also ended up becoming independent, leaving 300 Entertainment as they felt like QC could manage them alone and it'll only make them more money. Under 300, they were making around like 35k a show. Under just QC, bro, they were making up to 60 grand. Quavo, take off. How y'all doing? Yeah. Hey, God, what's going on? Now 2016 is here, my favorite year of all time, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they ended up dropping YRN2, the mixtape, in January of that year, which is a pretty underrated mixtape, if you ask me, with my favorite tracks being the intro and Ho on a Mission. Them shit slap. I'ma put it on for my city. No, you gon' put it on for these bitches. These bitches. These Young nigga, I came from nothing. When you throwing up your squad, you better ride on it. Oh. Yo. Oh. But we really on they ass. We really pay in April of that year, they ended up announcing their next project, No Label 3, releasing two singles for it, Say Some and Cocoon. I thought I say some. Oh. When I take drugs, I go to the moon. Yeah. Moon. Let's fall, bitch. Both songs ended up doing pretty big numbers on YouTube. And speaking of big numbers, they were featured on a pretty big hit with YFN Lucci, Key to the Streets. Cause we got the key to the streets. We got the key to the streets. Hey, we got the key to the streets. 
screen. But No Label 3 never ended up releasing. What they ended up dropping instead is what I probably think is their best project, bruh. I mean, there's only five songs here, but all five are top tier, bruh. Just straight gas. And that project is the three-way EP, bruh, that released in July of that year. Just a few months later, a song would drop that would catapult them into a whole nother stratosphere. If you thought Migos was mainstream by this point, bro, you ain't seen nothing yet. The song was a huge success and went on to become number one on the billboard in the beginning of 2017, just in time for their second studio album, Culture. Releasing on January 27th, selling 131 copies first week and debuting at number one on the charts. Many consider this album to be a staple in the 2010s with bangers such as T-Shirt, Slippery, Kelly Price, and more. Mama told me I not to sell word. Mama, I heard your bitch, she got that water. Splash, drip. My bitch, for real, she honest. Won't tell. Real quick though, I have to mention the beefs that Migos got into around this time. Bruh, Soulja Boy coming at Quavo is one of the funniest shits I ever seen, bro. <laughs> Straight comedy. Quavo, he started the shit with me first. So now that I'm responding to these niggas, not Soulja Boy crazy, Soulja Boy bullet, Soulja Boy. Nigga, pull up, nigga! Quavo, I text you my address, nigga, at one o'clock. I waited for you to 7 o'clock. We supposed to catch the fade one-on-one. -on -one, put it on World Star. You never showed up, nigga. You know how to fuck on rocket, nigga. When well, you got your chain snatched in DC, who the fuck when you call, nigga? Hey Quavo, you a bitch, nigga. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. I text you the address, nigga. I thought we gonna do the one-on-one -on -one fight for World Star, nigga. Stop acting like a bitch, nigga. Pick up the phone, Quavo. <laughs> fuck you, nigga. Puss ass, bitch ass, punk ass, sucker duck ass, lame ass, nigga. When I see y'all, I'ma knock your motherfucking teeth out, nigga. Y'all need to watch the whole thing of this. He even made a banger towards Quavo and them. <laughs> Quavo, you a bitch, nigga. Quavo said he wants some beef with me. Who? Quavo. Quavo. Quavo said he wants some beef with me. Huh? Huh? Fuck Quavo. Fuck Migos. Put on your block. Shoot. Uh, fuck Quavo. I know they had a little beef with X too, where dudes from their entourage jumped them. Nobody gave me the faith of a one-on-one -on -one, nigga. Nobody gave me the respect of a one-on-one. -on -one. And I painted that nigga when he was on the ground. Oh, hey, one more thing though. Just so y'all know, dumb pussy niggas ain't touch me. Pussy ass Quavo, pussy ass offset, and pussy ass lift off ain't do shit. Which I never understood, but whatever. The shit that went down with Joe Budden and academics, classic moment. I, I ain't left my battle boots. You think I left my battle boots? Say again? Well, I'm glad it succeeded, man. Hey, man, you guys are nominated tonight. Have a good show. I know Chris Brown and them got into an altercation apparently over Karuchi or some shit. This eventually led to Breezy getting surrounded by the Migos crew in the parking lot just before the police arrived. Yeah, you know, a little drama, kind of interesting. Aside from all that though, they ended up landing three big hits this year that all hit the billboards. With I Get the Bag with Gucci, Slide with Calvin Harris and Frank Ocean, and the hella random Bon Appetit with Katy Perry. You get the bag and fumble it, I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. We gon' pipe up and turn up. We gon' light up and burn up, burn up. Sweet potato pie. It'll change your mind. They were also on Lil Yachty's record Peekaboo. I can do magic and make me a rabbit with using my carrots. They ended up dropping the songs Ice Tray, where they threw a jab at Joe Budden. If a nigga hating, call him Joe Budden. Pussy. And one of their best songs of all time, in my opinion, Too Hottie. Do not play with the cake. I pull up and hop in the dirty race. She fuck on a nigga, I fuck a face. To go along with the QC album that dropped at the end of that year, Control the Streets Volume 1. Two pretty big singles also released in the end of this year, Motorsport and Stir Fry. Motorsport, yeah. put that thing in sports. Yeah. In the kitchen wrist, just like a stir fry. Put it in the kitchen wrist. Both released singles for their next studio album, Culture 2. Yeah, hey, make sure the year of the Migos is our year. Yes, sir. Our year. Sancho year, offset year. It's the last rocket year, man. We backstage, 
get paid. Now 2018 is here and they didn't waste any time with Culture 2, bruh. Releasing on January 26th, debuting at number one, selling 200,000 copies first week. Personally though, I thought the album was okay. I always feel like less is more and they definitely didn't do that here. This shit is 24 tracks long and the runtime is like an hour and 45 minutes, bro. It gets repetitive way too fast and I could tell the label just wanted to put as many songs as they could on here to boost streams and to top it all off, Migos even admitted to not even working more than 20 minutes on each song and if they really wanted to take their time on it, they'll take 40 to 45 minutes, bruh. That to me is not a flex. <laughs> like that just shows to me that you don't put in any effort. Don't get me wrong though. There are some bangers on here like Superstars, Beast, Walk It Like I Talk It, and Moving Too Fast is one that I like too. Superstars, superstars, superstars out. Hey, beast. She a little, she a little beast. Yeah. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it, walk it like I talk it. Walk it. I put the streets on beats. I've been geeked all week. Yeah. This was also the year that Quavo and Takeoff both dropped their solo projects. Quavo dropped his in October and Takeoff dropped his in November. Both were pretty solid in my opinion. Working Me was my jam this summer, bruh. Work, work. Working Me. Work. She working me. Work. But I don't want to stray away too much from the Migos as a group in this video. And speaking of a group, they ended up going on tour with Drake this year on the Aubrey and the Three Migos tour. Super lit tour, bruh. I wish I would have went to a show. So yeah, towards the end of this year, Quavo announced that Culture 3 would release early 2019, but as we now know, that didn't happen. So they ended up just dropping a bunch of singles this year, with songs like Pure Water, which was a smash. Uh, woo, woo. No masterpiece. Hey. Ten bad bitches and they after me. Bam. Position to win, which was pretty trash, <laughs> to, to be honest. Step it up, up, always take the risk. Up, up. Stripper Bowl, which I wasn't really the biggest fan of, but it's whatever. 500 rats for the stripper bowl. The money on the floor, better get it, ho. As well as Offset dropping his debut album, Father of Four, which was fire, by the way. QC also dropping the sequel to their Control the Streets series, with the songs Frosted Flakes and 100 Racks both being bangers, bruh. Don't stop, cause the money keep coming. Don't pull a pop and it's my stomach. Pop my first 100 racks. Hum. I blew it by the rack. Blew it. 2020 is here and we all know how crazy this year was out in the real world a lot of crazy shit was going on the pandemic hit and nobody could do any shows but migo still ended up dropping a couple singles here and there with give no fuck taco tuesday racks too skinny and need it we don't get no fuck no we don't get no fuck, fuck shit. Yeah. Taco Tuesday, I got the cheese, she tasting the Kool-Aid. Me go the plug. I caught me a coupe and I hop in it. Cool. He climbing the game, but he not in it. Nah. They're breaking back came with the fire in it. She got an eel on my aim on point. Shoot a neck lock, give me pain in my joints. We shoot a 50 round drum, honey bun. And to be honest, there weren't bad tracks by any means. They just didn't seem to stick. Yeah, they got a lot of views on YouTube, but none of them made any noise on the charts like that. With Needed with NBA Youngboy doing pretty decent, peaking at number 62 on the Hot 100 and lasting 15 weeks on there, while Give No Fuck with Travis Scott landed at 48, but only lasted one week there. And the other two tracks, Taco Tuesday and Racks Too Skinny, didn't even make the charts. I'm just being objective here. I'm not even trying to hate because I love the Migos. But it did feel like the internet's consensus was that they were falling off a bit or that people were kind of tired of them. So you know what they did? They said, all right, all right, hold my beer. We just been having, you know what I'm saying, time to bond with each other and time to spend, you know what I'm saying, with each other because our solo career has been allowing us to do different things. And you know what I'm saying, we got relationships and we growing. During this time, you know, I've just been focusing on my art, my craft, especially in the studio. While we locking in, we gotta be coming back on our third album, you know what I'm saying? So, it's time to bust their ass. I ain't getting no sleep today, you know what I'm saying? Working in the studio, I was in the studio last night, knocking out some bangers. Look, 
I keep a Glock on me, I'm gonna, I keep the Glock on me, but I'm gonna, I keep it from the sky, so but it's a plane, bitch, just rock it with yes. me. Yes! Yes! No, that's, I'm, you, I was just playing, I was really just playing. That right there. Toe to toe, come on, come on. How you talking right there? Come on, come on. Look up in the sky, so but it's a plane, bitch, it's the rocket with all these chains. That's, that's it. That's lit. That's him, we ain't going back we and forth. Yeah. We gone. Uh, stop. We good. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa. This sound like old me goes. Strain it, but strain it. Straight. You don't get shit straight, you don't straighten it. After what seems to be like two years of delays, Migos finally dropped their long-awaited Culture 3 album on June 11, 2021. I can definitely say that I enjoy this better than Culture 2, with bangers such as Having Our Way, Why Not, Roadrunner, Mahomes, Light It Up, like there's some real bangers on here. Having my way in the city, get put out your bridges, you talking to tripping. Go put on my clicks so on, get money. Why not? Cash. I sell a brick on your block. Brick. You think shit's sweet, but you know not. Sweet. Turn a bad bitch, don't speak. Never wanna fall on the sheets. Hands on the wall, I'm on the lease. Bitches on bitches like the fuck they friend. They done lord they standards in there. Everybody cool with it. Light it up for a 50 ball. Then I spend it on your bitch. And my charm like a crystal ball. I wish Juice World had a verse on the anti-social track, but I'll take what I can. I had love in a minute. I've been on drugs for a minute. It's really come full circle now that Migos has been in the game for damn near a whole decade now. Their influence is undeniable with the fashion, the cadence, the flow, the sound in general. Almost every rapper has took something from the Migos. And if anyone is going to give them their flowers while they're here, I'll be the one. The Migos is probably the most influential and dominating rap group to ever exist. I don't see them leaving this game anytime soon, and I feel like they still have a lot more to bring to the table. They're not done yet by any means. The chemistry that these three have is something that's rare nowadays. You don't see any beef between them, they never had any type of like breakup or anything. You know how that shit usually goes with rap groups. But you don't see that with the Migos, man. And that to me shows true brotherhood. So shout out to the Migos and everything that they've accomplished. I can definitely see them being relevant in this game for years and years to come, bro. If I was to take Migos in a world where we take Migos out of the culture, right? What does music sound like? I think you right. see like apocalypse. 